Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of a vitamin B3 or niacin deficiency. Before we talk about the signs and symptoms, let's talk about what vitamin B3 is. So vitamin B3 is also known as niacin. It is an essential water-soluble vitamin derived from dietary sources and endogenous synthesis. So it's essential meaning that we need to have it for particular processes, which we're going to talk about here in a moment. And we can get it from our diet or we can get it from endogenous synthesis. Endogenous means that we can produce it within our own bodies. And it is actually produced hepatically, meaning that it's produced in the liver. And this hepatic synthesis is going to also require essential nutrients as well for its production. Now, with regards to dietary sources, we can get vitamin B3 in fortified grains, meat, fish, and legumes. And we need vitamin B3 because it's required for several processes, including nutrient metabolism and fatty acid synthesis. So a vitamin B3 or niacin deficiency is going to cause issues with nutrient metabolism and fatty acid synthesis. And this is going to explain the signs and symptoms we're going to see as we go through this lesson. And a vitamin B3 or niacin deficiency causes a condition known as pellagra. So the signs and symptoms we're going to talk about here are the signs and symptoms of pellagra. So a niacin deficiency can come from a few different factors. One is going to be due to reduced dietary consumption or reduced dietary intake. Another is going to be due to compromised absorption. So you might be getting enough vitamin B3 in your diet, but you're not able to absorb it for some reason. Maybe you have some gastrointestinal condition that is causing issues with absorption. And the other factor can include decreased synthesis. So if there's issues with hepatic synthesis, this can also lead to a niacin deficiency as well. But the topic of this lesson is that a niacin deficiency causes a variety of signs and symptoms, and we're going to talk about those as we go through this lesson. Now let's look at the signs and symptoms of a niacin deficiency. As we go through the signs and symptoms, we're going to look at each body system and how it's affected by a niacin deficiency. So the first system we're going to look at is the gastrointestinal system. And as we go through this lesson as well, we're going to see that the signs and symptoms of a niacin deficiency or the signs and symptoms of pellagra can be remembered by the mnemonic four Ds. And we'll go through each of those Ds as we go through this lesson as well. So the first symptom of a niacin deficiency I want to talk about here is diarrhea. And diarrhea is actually one of the Ds that is part of that mnemonic we just talked about. So diarrhea is going to be a symptom of a niacin deficiency. This is often going to be watery diarrhea. Rarely it's going to be bloody or have mucus. Mostly it's going to be watery. This is going to be a common gastrointestinal finding in niacin deficiency. And alternatively, and more rarely, constipation may occur. But for the most part, it's going to be a watery diarrhea that occurs in a niacin deficiency. We can also see vomiting occurring as well. So nausea and vomiting can occur. The nausea can be a consequence of a gastritis. Gastritis is an inflammation of the stomach that can occur in niacin deficiency and can also be a consequence of achlorhydria. Achlorhydria is a condition where there is a lower amount of gastric acid. Both of these can be caused by an acid deficiency, and both can cause a nausea and potentially lead to vomiting as well. We can also see issues with dysphagia. So dysphagia is going to be difficulty swallowing. We can also see epigastric discomfort occurring as well. And there are other gastrointestinal or GI findings that can occur in a niacin deficiency. These include reduced appetite, weight loss, increased salivation, and abdominal pain as well. The next body system that we're going to look at that can be affected in a niacin deficiency is the dermatological system, so involving the skin. So skin issues are very important findings in niacin deficiency or in pellagra. One of them is going to be dermatitis, and dermatitis is actually the second D in our 4Ds mnemonic. So dermatitis is going to be a skin rash, and this skin rash is going to be symmetric. If you look in these images here, you can see that there's this symmetric skin rash, so meaning that it's on both sides of the body. This skin rash is going to be particularly rough and more pigmented than the surrounding skin, so it's often going to be red or brown in coloration. And it's going to be found in areas of sun exposure. So it's going to involve issues with photosensitivity. So often we're going to see the hands affected and the face affected. Any part of the body that's more exposed to the sun is more likely to be affected in a niacin deficiency. And patients are often going to describe a burning sensation from these skin lesions. Another more characteristic or hallmark finding of pellagra or niacin deficiency is what we call Cassell's collar or Cassell's necklace. So this is an image of what this looks like. So it's a pigmented skin lesion that circumscribes the neck. So it forms in the shape of a necklace or a collar. And this also is due to sun exposure. So again, we can see issues with the skin. And both of these are going to be due to issues with photosensitivity that is more likely to occur in niacin deficiencies. Another important 
finding in a niacin deficiency is alopecia. So alopecia is going to be hair loss, and this is actually going to be a common finding in niacin deficiency. So we can see hair loss or hair thinning, and it's often going to be diffuse. So it's not going to be in any particular area. Overall, the hair is going to get thinner. The next finding we're going to look at is glossitis. So glossitis is an inflammation of the tongue, and the tongue is going to be raw and red in appearance. And in some cases, there can be loss of papilla on the tongue. The little small raised dots on the tongue can become smooth. So this would be what we would call atrophic or an atrophic glossitis. And along with glossitis, patients can also have a sore or swollen mouth. So parts of their mouth inside the oral cavity can become sore and swollen as well. The next category of signs and symptoms we're going to look at is neurological and psychological signs and symptoms of a niacin deficiency. So depression and anxiety are going to be important findings in a niacin deficiency in pellagra. So it's important to distinguish that the depression and anxiety in a niacin deficiency is not major depressive disorder or generalized anxiety disorder. So because the depression and anxiety in a niacin deficiency is caused by an underlying medical issue, that being a niacin deficiency, then we're not going to actually categorize depression and anxiety in this case as major depressive disorder or generalized anxiety disorder. And then some other findings we can see include irritability and apathy as well. These are some other psychiatric manifestations. So patients can become very irritable and they can become apathetic, meaning that they don't feel their emotions as they should, their emotions may be blunted. We can also see insomnia being a symptom of a niacin deficiency. So difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep, or early morning awakenings can occur with patients who have pellagra or niacin deficiency. We can also see headaches occurring as well. So headaches can be common in a niacin deficiency, and it's often going to be a migraine headache. So in fact, migraine headaches are more prevalent in patients who have a niacin deficiency. So having a niacin deficiency or vitamin B3 deficiency is going to increase your risk for having migraine headaches. And if you actually treat those patients with vitamin B3 supplementation, they can actually reduce their onset or reduce the prevalence of their migraine headaches. We can also see fatigue occurring as well. So fatigue is also going to be a common finding. And along with fatigue, there can be muscle weakness as well. Patients with niacin deficiency, especially severe deficiencies and more long-term deficiencies can also have issues with delusions and disorientation. So confusion and delirium can occur as well. With regards to delusions, these are going to be fixed false beliefs. So they may have paranoid beliefs about certain conspiracies, for instance. These can be something that can occur in a niacin deficiency. And disorientation, they can be disoriented with regards to who they are, where they are, and when they are, for instance. And as you can imagine, the delusions and disorientation along with some of the confusion can appear like a psychiatric condition. Now, we can also have issues with dementia as well. Dementia is going to be our third D in our four Ds mnemonic. So dementia is going to be often a long-term consequence of severe niacin deficiency, and it's going to involve memory loss, and other cognitive deficits. And in some patients who have severe niacin deficiencies that go on for long periods of time, they can get worse to the point where they become comatose and even die as well. So death is actually our fourth D in our 4Ds mnemonic. So those are the signs and symptoms of a niacin deficiency or the condition known as pellagra. So again, the 4Ds are going to be diarrhea, dermatitis, dementia, and death. And we can throw in the fifth D as being depression. So that can also be something we can add to our mnemonic to help us remember what types of things can occur in a niacin deficiency. For more in-depth information on niacin deficiency, please check out my full lesson on this topic. And please check out my other lessons on other vitamin deficiencies as well. I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.